the remnant remained. The remnant carried on. I go, and I, I, I haven't done it this year yet, but last year, end of last year, I quickly went and I took one of my friends out uh, for breakfast. Dad is a, a, a very successful businessman. And when I took him out, I asked him questions. How did you get here? Where was your biggest challenge? What happened at the age of 40 in your life? What happened at the age of 45? How did you manage to, to change that stock to this? How did you do business? Give me four principles that can change my life. I don't just go and have a breakfast and say, oh, this eggs was so nice. We'll come back to this restaurant. Very nice restaurant. No, that doesn't mean nothing zilch to me. I can sit in McDonald's with him and still get the wisdom because I'm introduced to his world. I study these people. I study their mannerisms. I study how they walk off planes. How they walk on planes into the, into the business lounge. I check them out. I check what they read in the business lounge. They don't play Candy Crush. They read the Financial Times. They, they are intellectual. They check what's going on in the markets, man. Hello. I traveled with one of my friends, the same guy. And... Uh, when we came back from an international trip, he put on his suit. I said, why do you do that? He says, when I walk through customs, they're not going to stop me. <laughs> no, he didn't hide anything. It's just I don't rock up there with a cap and a jean, a, 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 a dirty sweatpants and a dirty t-shirt. It looks like a tourist coming to South Africa. And where are you coming from? South America? Go there. Let's check you out. He says, I don't have time to be interviewed. I don't have time to be checked. When I get off that plane and I get in my suit, I walk through customs. They treat me with a dignitary arrival and I can go through. That is the key to study the world of successful people. Sorry, but I just feel an apostolic thing on me. So I need to help my family here. Wisdom is on display every day. How's your wisdom displayed every day of your life? I make notes every time I enter into a new world. How did they do that? How did they change that? Why do they use those things? When I go in, into a church service, in a conference, I take notes. I like those lights. I take photos of them. I take photos of sound systems. I take envelopes, take photos of the envelopes. I do everything. Because it's a world that I'm not familiar with. And in that world, I observe and I get my mind filled. And when I walk back into NBCFC, I tell my staff, let's go to this level. Let's do this. And what do I do? I bring them to another level. Because I'm introduced to a world that can help them go to another level. That is the power of association. It's a waste to get into a world of a great man of God and not learn from them. It's a waste. If you don't learn from me and you've got my cell number and you don't ask me questions and you don't build a relationship, please do me a favor. Delete me from your contact list. Because you, you, can, you can use that contact list for somebody else. I want people that can say, I, know, I want to know what's your world. How do you work? How do you understand? How do you pray? How do you activate the supernatural? How do you walk in the power of God? How do you make wealth? How do you buy properties? How do you change the world? Hello. I'm an apostolic thing here tonight, man. I feel this thing in the spiritual world. I am so tired of people that are just wasting life, just going through life as if nothing is ever going to happen. Get some faith that something, can, something good can happen. Get some faith that you can build beautiful houses. Dwell in them, make some property, make some money. Why not become a property typhoon in this decade, man? 
Get the time right for me, please. Don't distract me. Make notes on everything. Now my question to you tonight is, are you happy in your world? Are you happy with your world? Hello? Are you happy with your world? I'm going to go to a different world. And I want to go through relationships and association. And I want to learn from people and see how people around me has done them. I want to learn from, my, from people that are now in my life where they can take a property, turn that property and make a million two hundred rand profit. Yeah. 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 Hey, no, you can't grow by 10%, man. Just stop living in that simple world. Get out of that world and get into the realm of people that can teach you, that can ex excite you, that can bring you into a world of the glory of God, into the supernatural, and they get displayed of wisdom. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. I'm not, I'm not going to go far. I, I, I'm going to, I feel rather to stop. Luke 2, verse 52. You're not pulling enough. So I'm just going to stop here. Luke 2, verse 52. And Jesus increased in what? And in what? And in? With who? So you need to have favor with God. Every day of my life, this is one of my prayers. Lord, I want favor with you. And I want favor with men. Everywhere I go, I'm telling you right now, something has happened in our life the past couple of months that is absolutely ridiculous. But it's because of a prayer of that I have favor with God. And favor with man. Now you can just look at me as your pastor. I suppose to any kids, my CEO is my director. Or you can access my world. And that's why I have the full authority. To say there is an anointing of property. In this house. Because I dwell and live in that land. But you can just fall under the power and shabba, shabba, or you can access and say, I'm going to sow into that apostolic anointing. I'm going to have access to that. I need to have a coffee with that man. I need to get the wisdom of God. Listen, a 200 rand breakfast is going to maybe make a 200 million rand deal for you. But you need to start accessing something in the supernatural dimension of God. Come on, I'm stirring something here. Come on, you need to reveal the power of God a little bit in your life, man. The, the first stage we grow in is the stage of wisdom. And then we grow into stature. What is stature? Maybe just hang on there. What is stature? Stature is this. Before they build a building, if you want to know how, how big that building is, you need to see what machinery comes on site. The machinery that's on site determines the building. That's going up. And how deep they're going to grow that foundation. Before you can determine the stature, you must see what's happening around. Be introduced to that. Then the second thing is the crane that arrives on the site determines how high that thing is going. And so the crane determines a lot of things. It determines the stature of that building. Let me take you a little bit practical. You can have a professor earning 40,000 rand a month. His education is good, powerful, studied many years to become a professor. But his statue is limited in, in experience or in influence. So yes, I have the wisdom, but my statue only goes to class one. Does that make sense? So you can be very intellectual. You can have all the degrees. But how far do you reach? How far is your crane extending? How far is the influence going? There are people in this building tonight that earns more than any professor I know. And they don't even have all the degrees. And don't even have all the 
all the experience and stuff. But their reach is so much further. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you in the next decade, this is what I'm going to say. You're going to grow in wisdom. You're going to grow in stature. And you're going to grow in favor. How many of you are ready to receive some wisdom from God? Some stature. Come on. And some influence. And some favor. Shout with me. Wisdom is coming my life. Come on. Say wisdom is coming to my life. Influence is coming to my life. Come and say, statue is coming to my life. I believe we're going to reach the world. Let me tell you, my statue is about to increase. I'm going to take property. I'm going to take territory. I'm going to take possession. I am not going to be bound by a little building like this. I'm stepping out and say, God, give us the airwaves. Give us the global revival. Give us a move of the Holy Ghost. Give us the outpouring of the supernatural in this end time move of God. Increase my wisdom how to carry it. Increase my stature on how to carry this. Increase my favor, oh God. You better get your passports ready, family. If you want to get some dollars in your account, you better get a passport ready. Because you're going to go and do business across the borders of this nation. Dollars are coming. Pounds are coming. Yang is coming. Come on, God's going to influence you and position your statue into China, into Asia, into India, into America. Come on, there is coming something upon the world today that your influence and your statue and your wisdom is going to increase. I feel this thing. Along with wisdom comes blessings and statues and connections and relationships and the blessings of God. Come on, every CD that's going to be launched is not just going to be launched in the church. It's going to be launched in statue and in favor. Come on, and in the glory of God. Reach! Yay! How many of you are ready to get some statue in your life? To reach a bit further. Sorry, sorry, but I'm just entering into my world. I pull in properties. I pull in properties overseas. In this nation, I pull in father factories. We pull in church buildings. We pull in father financial entrepreneurs. We pull in father the miraculous, the miraculous, the supernatural. Come on, give God 30 seconds of praise for new relationships, for wisdom, for statue. Come on, for favor. Holy Ghost. What is the blessing of God? It's the supernatural empowerment to prosper against all odds. Say, I'm blessed. Say, I'm supernaturally empowered. How does the blessing come? It comes through the words we speak. Touch someone next to you, tell them, I bless you. Those of you watching online, touch the television screen right now. Or your phone, your iPad, whatever. Say, hey, come on. I bless you in the name of Jesus. It comes through a natural father, number two. It comes through a spiritual father, number three. And then number four is where God just jumps in himself and the blessing comes upon you and he makes you rich. There is coming, just flow with me, I don't want that. Sorry, sorry. When I'm like this, you must forg- everybody must just forgive me. There is coming a cataclysmic earthquake of the blessings of God upon the people of God. I am telling you, it's not going to be normal. If you're expecting a 5%, 10% increase, I'm not speaking to you. I am speaking to people who walk in the power of God. I'm talking to people that says, I am tired of just breaking even. I'm going into the glory of God. I am accessing what heaven has in store for me. 
Come on, you're living in a world of the supernatural. Take a hold of the wisdom of the favor of the anointing of God. Woo. Touch somebody next to you, tell them, I bless you. Come on, walk to two people, tell them, I bless you. Come on, revival is here, family. Breakthrough is here, family. The anointing of the Holy Ghost is here, family. There it is, there it is. There it is. Come on, it's going to be an out of control move of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to close, but I'm going to go, go to, to Jeremiah. There at the back. Jeremiah 12. This is not in the message. I'm flowing now prophetically. Jeremiah 12, quickly. Verse 5. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> if you ran with the footmen and they have wearied you out, then how can you contend with horses? I feel this is what's happening right now in this moment at 7 o'clock tonight. What, what is the date tonight? First. First of, of what? March 2020. I'm telling you here tonight that God is saying you're no longer going to run with the footmen. You're no longer going to run with people just down here. I'm putting you next to horses. I'm putting you next to people that will run in dimensions that you've never known before. The coming revival will be a revival where you will see the dimensions of the supernatural power of God. No longer will you run with the footmen. You'll run with the horses. Shout amen if you believe it here tonight. Woo. Shout revival. I'm a revivalist of the end time move of God. Come on, I'm an end time financier of the move of God. Here Jeremiah comes, the Lord tells him, Jeremiah, I'm taking you away. You're not going to run with the footmen anymore. You're going to outrun horses. You're going to run with the horses. You're going to come with the supernatural power of God. I'm going to enable you to run with people who are in higher dimensions than the footmen. You know what footmen does? Take your seats, I'm done. <sighs> you know what footmen does? They, uh, they complain about it. Get the water and licht on me. And on the water and night. That one gossiped about me. That one said something about me. Uh, let, me let me give you the language quickly of a footman. Put on verse 1. Verse 1, 2, 3, 4. Sorry, I'm just changing. It's whatever the Lord wants. Righteous are your Lord when I plead with you. Yet, let me talk with you about your judgment. Look how Jeremiah is with the Lord. He says, oh Lord, I love your righteousness. Go back. I love your righteousness. You're so good. But, but can we just quickly talk a little bit about your judgment? You've done great decisions the past 2,000 years, but lately you've messed up a little bit here. So he asked the Lord, why does the way of the wicked prosper? You all sit so cute here, you all smile so nice, lift hands, so excited, but in that row, there's somebody saying that. Where's the Lord? I've tithed, I've given my offerings, I've given again apostolic blessings, I've done everything I need to do. They all sit in your row, all smiley, all shiny, all shaking under the power, but in the inside of them, they ask you just like Jeremiah, hey God, what about this move that you're making here? Why don't you heal me? Why do you heal that one? 
Why are those happy who deal so treacherously? They're full of bribes. They're full of scallum deals. But you place them. Don't look at me like that. You have planted them. Yes, you have taken root. They grow. And they bear fruit. You are near in their mouth. If you ask them, I, oh dear, dear, dear. But they are far from God. But you, oh Lord, you know me. You've seen me. And you have tested my heart towards you. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter. And prepare them for the day of slaughter. Come on, Lord, sort this thing out. Don't let them prosper. Don't let them get healed. Why is it that a sinner can get healed in India, a Muslim that doesn't even know God? We do a crusade there and we say, if you want to, how many of you got healed? And they raise their hands, they get out of wheelchairs, cancers fall off, legs grow, arms grow, blind eyes see, they don't even know Jesus. Here I am, praying at corporate prayer. I'm a hop leader. I'm a good man. I come to church. I give apostolic blessings. I give to television. But I'm poor. I struggle. Yet they increase. They bear fruit. I was there. With Michal. A couple of years ago, I sat in a meeting in uh, Pastor Maldonado's church. And I said, God, you must heal my child. I took him there. Flew down go for him to be prayed. They prayed for him. Nothing happened. I sat just like you. <laughs> on the inside of us I want to get out of this building stuff everything and every Christian that's how I felt because I've been praying and seeking God fasting God for my son's miracle and nothing happened I drove home to the hotel I said God you better speak now I'm mad and I said if you send my son to hell or I go to hell because of this then you are an unfair God I was mad at God. Because He provides all the other people. I just came back from Ethiopia and those people are so bound with demons but you healed them and my son? Angry. Frustrated. Messed up. It's I'll tell you another thing. How long must this land mourn? And the herds of the field with her. The beast and the birds are consumed for the wickedness of those who dwell there. Because they said, He will not see our final end. Your God comes. If you run with footmen, Nikki, you complain about not Michal being healed. You complain about you angry because the miracle didn't take place. You complain because the other one got a house and you didn't get a house. Some of you complained last Sunday night because other people got money in their account while you got nothing. God said, I'm tired of those footmen excuses and little stuff of you. I'm going to put you next to horses and now you're going to start running in the power of God just like a horse that controls, that dominates, that brings the power of people in that place that scripture so if you have run with footmen and they have wearied you how will you run with horses I need money to pay my water and lights what are you going to do when you have a a business and you have a hundred employees and you have to pay 200,000 and water and lights every month for your factory how are you going to handle that <laughs> the 
it's a tell me. But I'm here to tell you. When God spoke to me, he says, you're going to stop running with the footmen. You're going to run with the horses. God did a supernatural thing for my son. And all of a sudden, my son started e- excelling. He went for the operation. Started supernatural incre- uh, uh, improvement. They told him, you'll never play another sport in your life. You will never be able to do normal things. Michal played for the first, well, for the second rugby team in the matric year. He was in the newspaper in the year with a whole article, two pages of what God has done for him. He has finished as a top student. Why? Because he's running. I'm not going to hang around with the footman of a hundred thousand rand here. Lord, give me a hundred million. Give me a billion, oh God. Yeah. How many of you are tired of just living an average life? Just living with the footman. Come on, I pull you out. I don't have time. I don't even study this. But all I know is that they use horses for crowd control. The policemen are sitting on those horses. And you ask them, why are you on a horse? Because they dominate the crowd. And they control the crowd. I'm running with horses. Yes, somebody's earring. I'm running with horses. Oh, hey. here. If we can just tomorrow have some. Hey, no! Why God can supply the whole decade for you? Come on, how many of you can run a little bit here with the horses of the supernatural power of God? Now give Jesus 30 seconds of the most ridiculous praise you can in this building tonight for greater things. Your property can be paid off. Stop running with footmen. Run with the horses. I feel, I feel, I feel. Businesses are coming in. Contracts are coming in. Breakthroughs are coming in. The miraculous are coming in. The outpouring is coming in. We're going to have to run with the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Quickly, Father, I release a fresh anointing to run take us out of passivity take us out of just being living with the norm and accepting the norm and this is what the bank tells you and you will do that we refuse to be footmen I will be running with the horses oh shaka raposhe Yes, Lord. Oh, yes, thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord just spoke to me. He says, I'm going to, I am in the mood. This is what he said. I am in the mood to answer ridiculous prayers. He said, I am in the mood to answer ridiculous prayers. Crazy prayers. Some of you want to get married and you believe in God for your wedding. Throw in a honeymoon in Hawaii. Business class. Some of you are trusting God for a car. Throw in a Mercedes and some BMW. Come on. God is in the mood. God is in the mood to answer ridiculous prayers. Come on, we're going to trust the Lord for our bigger building. Yes. Yes. Come on, we 
are believing for the outpouring globally. Woo. Ridiculous prayers being answered. Lord, I ask on behalf of NBCFC, plant NBCFC in every nation and every continent with the best of the best equipment and the best of the best buildings. I'm asking for ridiculous things, God. The portal is open. Appropriate us. Come on. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Angels are coming with your prayers. Five, four, three, two, one. They are here. Grab a hold of your miracle. Grab a hold of that ridiculous prayer. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Open up the continents of God. Open up the world of God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take it up, take it up, take it up. And then you end it strong. Hallelujah! My miracle is here. My breakthrough is here. My revival is here. In the name of Jesus, I receive it now. It's close. I receive it now. When? Now. Tomorrow? Now. When? Now. Are you rich? Now. When are you rich? Now. When do you get your property? Now. When do you get your breakthrough? Now. Shout, I believe. Revival is coming in wagon loads. Wagon loads of the blessings of God. Before we go, tell two or three people, tell them, Behold, your wagon is coming. Are you excited that your wagon is coming? Are you excited your wagon is coming? Well, then you must pray. Now listen, I'm done. I didn't even get past intro. So uh, when I'm back, I'll catch up on this. So uh, FLC is going to be powerful. There's a setup here. But um, the Bible says Jacob's spirit was revived. Well, Jacob saw the wagons coming full of gold and silver and his spirit was revived and Israel stood up. Let me tell you this. The coming revival will be so full of wealth that whether you believe it or not, you're going to be revived and say, How did you do that? That's coming. I believe it with my whole heart. I have a mandate from God to activate this generation in revival. And we will do it. This coming week, we're going to activate hundreds of pastors in revival. They're going to go back to the nations and bring in the greatest move of the Holy Ghost like ever before. How many of you believe that with me? All right. So, Father, I bless your people. I'm blessed. I need to stop. I'll preach the whole night.
but let me just say this. The reason why God bless you is because not for you. Do you know that? It's for three generations. When God looks at you, love it. When God, and please, I don't, I just want to use an example. This is how God looks at us. He looks at us three generations. So you may say, I need water and life money. He doesn't, he doesn't think like that. He says, I want to give you, 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 for three generations, enough water and life money. That's how God thinks. But because we think our world, he can't come into that world. So God, you need to come into His world. You need to understand His world of wisdom and of knowledge and of influence. You're going to grow just like Jesus in wisdom, in stature, and in favor. Let's make that our declaration before we go. Raise your right hand and say, I believe I'm going to grow in wisdom, in stature, and in favor. This week. God is going to surprise me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching this program. If you want more content on this, I want you to subscribe to my channel. And by doing that, you'll be activated in the supernatural power of God. You'll see in-depth studies on how to be mobilized, activated, moving the supernatural power of God. I really believe this channel will change you and touch you. So please subscribe. Please share and please give us a review on YouTube. God bless you.